Welcome to our tutorial of Quick Surface. In this video, we'll show how to use our standalone reverse engineering package Quick Surface and how you can load scan data, convert it into CAD models, and export for further use in other CAD packages. Quick Surface is a standalone Windows application which can be started after the installation by double clicking on the icon on the desktop or you can start it from the start menu. And there is a welcome message which tells the user that there are many ways of customizing the software. As you will see later, the 3D view can be navigated using uh, the mouse buttons and there are many different software using a different uh, combinations. Quick Surface allows the user to customize the behavior of the software so it is uh, closer to the user's preferred software. After pressing OK, this will bring a new dialog, which is the software options dialog, where the user can select the default, which is the predefined for quick surface, or he can use some of the software which he has recently used. At, uh, under the um, list of the options, the user can see which buttons can be used for the rotation, translation, and zooming of the object on the screen. When the user is ready, he just press OK and the software starts. When you download the software, the software will need to be activated. It will not run and will require an activation key. The way you need to activate is either by clicking on the prompt message in the 3D view, or try to do something and the pop software activation dialog will appear. So the software licensing is based on the PC MAC address and needs to be activated on every machine where it's installed. In order to activate this, the user must provide the serial number to the mesh to surface team, and then he will receive a license key which he needs to enter in this dialog box. Please don't send the bitmaps, but just try to use this button copy to clipboard, where you get the this uh, activation serial number as a text file, send it to support at mesh2surface.com and we'll return the activation key. When you receive the activation key, then you just paste it here and press activate. The software needs to be restarted so the license is activated. Now, having this uh, license, the software is up and running, and he can and we can continue and start working with it. If we take a look at the window, it comprises of the main 3D view, where the scene will be, an object tree, where whatever feature we create will appear here, a toolbar with the different action items, and the menu. Also, in many cases, when the user works, he sh the easiest way to access some of the commands is just by right-clicking and a menu will appear with the command. The way we start is actually by opening an, a file which comes from a 3D scanner. Quick Surface supports a couple of formats which we truly believe they are enough for the purposes of reverse engineering, as most of the packages export in a common file format like STL and OBG. Quick Service has its own proprietary file format with the extension QSF. So when you create a project and when you save the data on the disk, they will be saved in QSF file. Also, Quick Service supports PTX point cloud. This point cloud is coming from a long-range laser scanning 
and because it's ordered, the software offers the user to be able to triangulate this uh, mesh on the fly and then create uh, reverse engineering based on on this uh, mesh. For this demonstration, I'll just open a very simple part, which we'll play with it later. And this is a um, STL file format. The user is offered to choose in which units the um, file is stored. The default and only unit which uh, Quick Surface uses is millimeters, so we need to convert the data into millimeters. So the way it works is that the user knows in advance how he saved the file, so then he can choose one of the options, the units which this file is stored, and then the software automatically will scale the object and put it in the correct uh, size. In this case, I'll just choose millimeters. After the import, the file appears on the screen. So this is our reference mesh. The way we, we can work with this mesh is just rotating on the screen. We can pan it or we, we can zoom. In such a way, we can explore and look in details about the mesh, work on it, create a cut model from this um, mesh, which we will learn later and uh, use it as a reference. Also, Quad Surface is uh, created in such a way that it supports 3D connection mouse. So if you have a 3D connection mouse, just plug it, install the drivers needed to do the connection and you're ready to go. So you can use a, use, can combine a, a free rotation by using this mouse. He can zoom in and out and he can just place the object the way he wants. If you take a look, our mesh appears in our object tree and it's always called reference mesh. In many cases, if you just leave the mouse on the screen and you don't know what to do, at the very bottom of the screen, you always get a, what we call on-screen help. The user, I'll show you in a minute how the user can switch this off, so if he is too advanced in the software, he doesn't need to use this. 3D View has a numerous short cut buttons where you can place the object in a standard view. So if you zoom the object, pressing the first button, which is called Zoom to Fit, we just place the view in such a way so all the objects which are visible will be seen. The other way to do this Zoom to Fit is just by right clicking and say Zoom to Fit command. The other way to do this is also just by pressing the A key on the keyboard. Also, the user can put the objects in a different from back view, left, right, top and bottom. What means this in the software is that it places, it uh, refers to the world coordinate system. So if you put it on the front view, it's actually see from the minus Z, so it places the object in such a way so the z-direction of the global coordinate system is up. At any point the user can switch on and see the global coordinate system on the screen. This helps in many cases to get an idea how this object stays in, in space and as you learn later when we align the object this will be really important. I will go and show you a bit more how to customize your software. If you go to settings, options, there are options how you can change the behavior of the software, adjust your colors and make it more suitable for you. As I showed you in the beginning of this video, the software offers you to choose the navigation scheme, but you can come here and at any time just select your navigation mouse buttons from the drop down menu. Let's go now and take a look at the SOLIDWORKS. We show a short description which buttons are used for rotation, for translation and zoom. If I press OK, now the software will behave as you are using SOLIDWORKS. 
just by using the uh, shift and middle button, it zooms. It also using the control and middle button pans, and the middle button only is for rotation. Another option which the user can customize is reverse the zoom direction of the mouse wheel. We know that mouse wheel can be used in many software just to zoom in or zoom out the object. Like in Google Maps, it's interesting that when you use the mouse wheel, it actually takes where your mouse is and keeps this point of the object just of your uh, cursor. For example, if I place my cursor here, as you see, this corner stays always where my cursor is. If I put my cursor here, it actually points, zooms it differently. So it really depends the zooming, the way mouse wheel works depends on where your actual mouse is. So if we can, if we just check this option when I use mouse wheel, it just reverses the behavior of my zooming. So this is again preference for the uh, for the users how to do this. There is an option what to do if we use the arrow keys on the keyboard. If I if I just press the arrow keys, it, they will rotate the view by 90 degrees. But if I hold control and pressing the arrow key, it will rotate to the custom um, to to the degrees which the user has provided. By default, this is a 10 degrees, but we can put it for example 45. So now, if I just press the arrow key, it just rotates 90 degrees. But if I hold control, it just actually makes the scene rotating only at 45 degrees. Or if you want to be more precise, you can put uh, 1 degree or 5 degrees. Let's try this and then the user can just flip, uh, rotate uh, around the um, screen Y and screen X coordinate. When we load a huge number of meshes, Depending on the graphics card, you can uh, we can display as a solid, but when we rotate in order to handle this properly, if the mesh is too big, you can just um, decide a limit of how many triangles of the mesh should be uh, rendered as a points during the rotation. In this case, if I make something like 10,000, it still will draw the, the mesh as a uh, uh, solid, but when you try to rotate the mesh on the screen, it will just switch to turn the graphics engine into rendering points so the user can easily manipulate on the screen. So this option is also customizable and by default it's one million. There are other options which will be for the tessellation and curve point size, but I will explain them later. The user can customize the color's appearance. So here you can see a list of uh, uh, how we render on the screen and how you can customize this. If I take this uh, selection, background top is actually this color, the way I need to change it is by clicking on this box and it offers me a color which I can change. You can see the changes immediately. I can put it in green color and put it in blue and in this way I can just change the the background. I can also change the the mesh color in blue or also because when we render the mesh we have a front facing and back facing I can put a different color. So what if I want to do this uh, back to what uh, uh, quick service provides. If I just go select my color and if I press default, it will just put this color back to what it was when the software was installed. But if I want just to reset everything for all the settings, I just set all the defaults and everything will be bring, will bring back to the initial setup. When we load the project and if we Save the project as my first part, QSF project. While we work, 
the software may crashes or may hang at some point, which we know it's, mm, it's always an unpleasant situation. So that's why the user can set up the system so it automatically creates a backup file for recovery, for example, every one minute. So in every minute, whatever you do, it will be saved as a separate file, which is has an extension QSF DAK, which comes from a quick surface file backup file. So later, at any point, if you want to open a file, in all support format, you can see that there is another option, which is called Quick Surface Backup Files. And this will open my file, which I have worked. So I can load it and save it as a QSF file, and I can restore my job if we lose something. As I told you, if you get advanced and you don't need all this annoying uh, message, which appears every three seconds and disappears, you can always turn off this on-screen help. So this is, was the first tutorial and I hope you got the idea what this is for and how you can start with our software. In other tutorials, we will continue further in details how to reconstruct, create surfaces and find all the tools which people can use in Quick Surface. Thank you for watching.